dun, 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 dun. This is the theme song we're never going to use again. <laughs> and in other things that we may never use again, this, yeah. <laughs> today on Under the Table, I am drinking a Not Your Father's Vanilla Ice Cream, Vanilla Cream Ale. It tastes exactly like it sounds. I am drinking one of my last cans of The Physicist, the Kroger brand Airsatz Dr. Pepper with the best name ever. It's okay. I'll imbibe for us both. Hmm. Well, uh, we're doing something slightly different. We thought, <clears throat> let's try and do a let's try and do a pseudo regular podcasty thing where we more we just kind of bitch about stuff. <laughs> maybe not always bitch. Maybe not always bitch. Yep. We, Sometimes we could talk quite nicely about things. We saw that there was a lack of nerds talking about nerd stuff on the web, and we've decided to fill it, that void. Shameless. Shameless. Okay. No, too much shame. For shame. <laughs> We're shameless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the things I should feel shame about. Mm. Are none of the ones I do. And vice yeah. versa. But, uh, no, it's so... <clears throat> Sorry. Weather's hitting what's left of my asthma. Um, so no, just kind of whatever strikes our fancy a week. And uh, some of you who follow me on Twitter probably saw me bitching for a bit about... Brought on... I didn't actually notice the news story until later. Apparently, they will be making a... Or they're going to try <laughs> and make a Captain Planet movie. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, apparently this is a thing they're going to attempt to happen. And, um... Yeah, um... That's gonna be a tricky thing to pull off. I do... Mm -hmm. I do not... I do not envy the creative uh, staff of that film. No. No. And who, who the hell was it that they tapped? They'd actually tapped someone big, and I've just completely blanked. Let me look that up real quick. This is the kind of preparation you come for. Yeah, yeah. We are a professional. Oh, yes. Leonardo DiCaprio. Is directing? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is in talks to make Captain Planet movie. Huh. Ah! Fucking autoplay. Fuck off. You autoplayed the intro. You fucking new site. Oh, yeah, the news sites are getting bad about that. I hit one um, earlier this week where the se the page was set up so that you would get the multiple news stories one after the other, which is fine, except all of them had an autoplay video, and there were four videos running simultaneously. Oh, oh no, I just read further into the thing. I didn't even read, I just saw the news announcement. This is This is worse than I thought. Okay, Leonardo, it's... It's his Appian Way Productions are in talks to make this version. Okay. Okay, here's... According to reporters Rebecca Ford and Boris Kitt, sources say... Here we go. The story takes place years after the adventures of the show, with the captain now a washed-up has-been who needs the kids more than they need him. But he's an elemental spirit that doesn't exist unless they summon him into existence. I think we've just seen another example of everything wrong with the nostalgia grab movie. Well, uh, if they're if they're playing it as a comedy, maybe. I mean, one of the few ways I could see this film working as in a Brady Bunch the movie kind of way. I don't think that's because uh, DiCaprio is very much an environmentalist. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could still have a good environmental message in there while still playing the cheesy-ass 90s version just completely straight and ramping it up to 11. That takes a lot of skill to pull off. Oh, I know. No, but uh, <laughs> that's like the only option I can see where this would turn out well. Um, yeah, you'd have to rely, because nobody gives a shit about Captain Planet outside of a pseudo-ironic... I remember that. God, what were we thinking? Yeah, I don't even... The stuff I watched as a kid was stupid. It, it's... Admit it. Yeah. The stuff oh, you yeah. watched as a kid... The stuff we watched as kids were stupid. We're we're a decade above most. 
Yeah, no, I... That 80s stuff was garbage. I, I will... Yeah, the, there, not to say that there weren't high points, because there were, oh, yeah, but, yeah. you know, Disney, D- the Disney afternoon, come on. But, Ghostbusters, yeah. yeah. Well, the real Ghostbusters. Real Ghostbusters, the Straczynski, more in control, the the ones that weren't being meddled with. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, you know, even, you know, certain things here and there, first season of Ninja Turtles, you know, I mean, they, they had some yeah. high quality stuff. But I will, I will gladly put the average Drek from now against the average Drek from then, and mm-hmm. now's Drek is way better than then's Drek. Yeah, it's like if you're looking at a thoroughly average show now. Um, there's one that was running on Disney. I think it was Disney for a while called Packages from Planet X. Never heard of it. Entirely Flash animated, kind of stilted. Basically, it was workmanlike across the board. It, it was occasionally hmm. funny, but you know, it just kind of worked. You know, yeah. wasn't anything expe- anything you know exceptional. But I would put that against, say, uh, the Get Along Gang. Ugh. Oh yeah, you remember that? Or Rubik's the Amazing Cube. You know, we could be bastards right here and edit in some of the Get Along Gang theme song. In fact, you're going to do that. Oh. Of course. Bingo, the Wow, poor guy. Just plunking about ten just plunking about fifteen seconds of the theme song. Get out with the get along game. Oh. So everybody can share the giant scab that is in my head oh yeah yeah and and what's remarkable is like back then it actually was way harder to get something made because you had to have people hand animating everything Mm -hmm. had massively more larger stabs and so forth everything being painted by hand on even the shittiest cartoons nowadays you can get two you know three dozen people with a copy of a uh, copy of uh, like anime studio and throw something out, and you'd think that that would increase the number of shitty cartoons, but it just hasn't. Hmm. Not appreciably so. Not appreciably so. I I, I say the kids now have a better good to bad ratio than we did, but I, I I part of me wants to say that um the competition has made it so that they have to be better. Yeah, and it, it is a lot of uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, stuff with like everybody having learned from how Bruce Tim re- reinvented things, and yeah, you know everybody after that, and so there's just a lot more stuff that people will let get made now. Yeah, but um, yeah, there's a reason you're not see. There's a reason you're not seeing the Get Along Gang or the Snorks come back, mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff like that. And something I you know I tweeted about it, but I want to kind of go over the idea. Like, just the idea that, okay, hey, you remember Captain Planet, so you'll go see this movie, right? We've been down this road before. It doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And I know why people are... And we all know why they're they're doing this. Transformers. Right, because Transformers worked. Um, Oh, boy, did it work. Inexplicably (laughs) did it work. (laughs) Well, the, the thing that people don't get is that you can't just assume that because something comes from the same decade as another thing that succeeded in a remake that it's going to work the same yeah um prime example he-man that has been wallowing for decades but my my big thing is um the 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 big nostalgia-based revamps from the early 90s and the 80s that are going strong now, there's basically three of them. Transformers, Ninja Turtles, and Power Rangers. And all three of those share something in that they didn't pop up and then go away and then come back. They really never left. There has almost always been a Turtles cartoon on the air and a toy line. There has almost always been a Power Rangers show and toy line on the air. There has almost always been Transformers. Okay, on the toy line, the on the air didn't really happen for a little while. Mm -hmm. But 
all of them do have rich backgrounds that have most importantly had a lot of reinvention through them. And and they've laid a foundation. Something sturdy that you can stand a live action another go at. Right. On top of. Because, I mean, um, Hasbro, I don't think it's any secret that Hasbro was iffy on the movie. Mm-hmm. Not specifically because of Michael Bay. Let's get the, yeah, yeah, har, har. Not specifically. They just didn't. Because y'all remember the 90s, there were a lot of failed comic book movies. A shitload of failed uh, 50s sitcom revamp. Yeah, like the Honeymooners and stuff like that. Yeah, well, the Honeymooners gets a point. The Honeymooners gets a big point for at least changing the race Mm -hmm. of everybody. I mean, that was a a largely black cast, you know, replacing everybody. So, you know what? I will give you points for that. I actually haven't seen it, so I can't say if it was any good. It may not have been. Right. But, I mean, we had McHale's Navy, um, Sergeant Bilko, Car 54, Where Are You? Yeah, yeah, that was more what I was thinking of. The Flintstones. And the Flintstones kind of worked for the first one, just on the novelty of 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 the world. Uh, yeah, and the fact that you had Rick Moranis and John Goodman. Yeah, yeah. Um, who are two incredibly solid comedians. But out of that whole, like, rolling dumpster fire of, uh, <laughs> uh, just, you know, they, they said it and they kicked it down the hill. It's one of those greasy dumpsters from around back of a, a, a fast food place, so it's going to burn for a while. Yeah. And they, out of that rolling dumpster fire, they only really had a couple of them that were box office successes. I mean, you had uh, Adam's Family, uh, the Brady Bunch. Both Adam's Families managed to do well. The Brady Bunch movie. um, I think that. I think that was more of a cult hit. Cult hit, but yeah. And then. What? You're stumbling, aren't you? Yeah, I can't. Because I couldn't think beyond Adam's Family. Yeah. And it's the same for comic book movies. You basically had. Uh, the first Batman movie, un, un, undisputable success. Mm-hmm. The second one, well, it made a lot of money, but it kind of made people stop and go, is this really the way we want to take it now, guys? <laughs> and then you wound up with your uh, your barbed wire and your... Your Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd, your, your Punisher with Dolph Lundgren... Uh, that barely counts. <laughs> Did that even that? I don't remember. Did I saw some... that in a theater. Okay. It was there for like three days, but <laughs> um, steel, steel. Um, it was a tank girl, tank which girl. I have a bit of a fondness for, just for set design. Well, yeah. And but tank and girl was never really... gonna work because you can't no. get America. It's hard to understand where tank girl is coming from if you're not expecting it. Yeah. Like there needed to be a. Th- it's too weird. There just needed to be a little card that popped up at the beginning. And keep in mind, this is an absurd comedy, and then everyone mm-hmm. would know what they were getting in for, and I think it might have done better. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh. But yeah, we we've been down this road before, and with Transformers doing very well, like I said, you've got a lot of desire to mine the past. Which I get, and you can do that well. But, so you've got the... I've lost my thing. Desire to mine the past. Yeah, desire to mine the past. Um, But even then, yeah, a a long-term existence, like Transformers and Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers has, you know, a a steady stream isn't even a guarantee itself. Like, like, as mentioned before, He-Man. It has been kept going... Most of this time, partially because it's one of the few IPs that Mattel actually owns mm-hmm. <laughs> and doesn't license out. But New Adventures of He-Man didn't do well. The Cartoon Network revival didn't do well. Then it kind of lingered in that subscription service where it was kind of hostage-holding mm-hmm. figures for several years. 
And it kind of did okay there because of the, but also because you had a really hungry fan base. Right. A hungry, dedicated fan base, but it wasn't doing a hell of a lot to draw in new people. Yeah. Well, what I would say is one of the major factors is that the thing that does wind up giving these franchises strength is not necessarily longevity, but flexibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. There have been many different versions of Transformers, and it's very obvious that it can work in multiple reboots with a whole lot changed across the board, and people are down with it. I mean... Turtles. Turtles, the Fred Wolf cartoon everyone was looking at, like, got into it with, was the freaky reboot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was totally different than what had come before, and then every other version has been some some varying amount of those two strands of DNA. It's like, sometimes it's more black and white turtles, sometimes it's more cartoony turtles, but they mix them together, and I mean, and even... Chuck in a bunch of new elements. Yeah, and even then, I mean, back, in, back when it was new, the Archie comics were this entire other third thing that became its own mutant continuity. Uh, mm-hmm. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> Power Rangers, like past Power Rangers changes every year and a half. Yeah, year you had like a good three, maybe four years with the original cast cycling in and out, mm-hmm. and then it was like the only people we have left are Bulk and Skull, and then just Bulk, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just and the rest of the show just changes around them. And sometimes they're magic, and sometimes they're sciencey, and sometimes they're taking order for orders from a space dog lizard. Doggy Kruger. Yeah. Um, I, I, I I was in love with that. I, I just saw one episode at a friend's place, and he was like, yeah, I'm training you with live minds. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. Uh, I remember, like, after the after the thing got rolling a couple of years, I, I kind of tuned back in. I was like, wow, the girls sure got prettier real fast. <laughs> and the villainesses are certainly wearing less than they used to. But, uh, yeah, uh, but no, He-Man's got, there's not a lot of flexibility with He-Man, and it's not, and as we've repeatedly seen, it's kind of hard to get sword and sorcery back. Right. Right now. If they, if you wanted to see He-Man land in the same place, then the next, the same place as these long-running things, then the next series would have to be about, um, about Adam Prince, who lives in in you know outside of Columbus, Ohio, and mm. happens to sit upon the gate between the, his world and Eternia, where the evil Lord Skeletor is coming to hunt him and his exiled royal family. Yeah, you know something like that. You know where he's attending high school, but transforms into this buff superhero to fight alien monsters from another dimension. I know that sounds nothing like He Man, and that's the point. Yeah. On uh, you know, GI Joe, GI Joe is having its problems, which we've talked about many times in the past. But right now, yeah, the military's not at its highest popularity point right now, and they just don't want to bring him back to hunting mummies and yetis and shit. Yeah. I mean, they got an yeah. escape hatch. They're just refusing to use it. Yeah. Because eighties, like there is. So yeah, there is one outlier at the moment that's in its early stages of good success. We need to see where it's going. Voltron. Oh, man. I was skeptical. Uh, For many reasons. I tuned in to that that expecting to get a good, like, this is why this doesn't work vlog out of it. And by the end of it, I was like, you know what? I really like this. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, Voltron... Up until the Dream, the DreamWorks series, mm-hmm. that franchise made He-Man look sprightly. Oh yeah, and successful. Voltron was not even a staggering corpse; it, it was crawling by its fingernails. Yeah, there was. A, I mean, just the year before, there was a show on Nick, I think, mm-hmm. that just got completely buried. They canceled all the merchandising. Yeah. yeah. It just did, it was gone. did not work. But this new the thing on Netflix, I mean, that's just a good damn science fiction show. Well, um, here's the thing about Voltron that I think they approached this possibly the smartest. Transformers was a fluke. Mm-hmm. They got Spielberg and they got Bay 
they got a really great production house. You know, for whatever reason, Transformers continues to work, and it's hard to replicate that lightning. Right. They, Voltron did not go for the movie. That's a risk. You either have something pretty secure to fall back on, or you don't do it. <laughs> right. Voltron, they went with putting out a complete TV series all at once on a platform that is where the show is effectively free to watch. Mm-hmm. Netflix is basically made of convenience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Volt- get the, the Dreamwave Voltron series is has an incredibly low barrier for entry. It's a thing. If you have Netflix, you can marathon it in a night. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really easy to get into. Right. You don't have to worry about coming back week by week. You're not hunting it down off of uh, your TiVo because it's playing on some on on Nickelodeon at a time when you're at your day job. Or Cartoon Network where they won't let you have a consistent schedule. Right. And the other thing is, is I mean, it it keeps a lot of the stuff from the original series, but it definitely plays with the formula. I mean, I was super impressed that I think there's three row beasts in the entire yeah. th- in the entire thirteen episode run. Maybe two. Uh, you had the the one with the eyes. Uh, there was the very first one. Mm-hmm. Then there was the yeah, there was the tentacly eye one with all the lasers. I don't remember a third one. Yeah, it was. Uh, let's see, I'll double check because I could have sworn there was no, a third one, but <clears throat> no, I don't remember a third one at all. I think by the time they got to that point, they were dealing with the fact that um, what's his name could control the Black Lion. Oh yeah, yeah. They were at the finale by that point. One thing that I did notice is that um, they changed up the the main cast in subtle ways. Yeah, and then. Uh, they also just uh, completely. There's no Prince Lothar. No, yet. Yeah, no. no but they're sa- they're clearly saving him back to be a replacement villain, and that shows that they've got plans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just in general, it was just the whole thing was really smartly planned on every level. Putting it out on Netflix as a TV series to watch all in one shot is probably the smartest way you can do it. They've built that built-up hype. You know, they went to a good production company who clearly does things with love and care. And so now you've got this groundswell that may turn around and now buy toys at retail. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've confirmed it. It's just two row beasts. It's the gladiator row beast and the eye row beast. Um, But it's... Yeah, so they've built... They've built a foundation now as to whether or not Voltron will continue to go and become an evergreen series or just a really good one shot that can kind of lead into, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Early days still. Early days. But as somebody who was incredibly skeptical and did not waste an opportunity to slag off Voltron (laughs) in the past. Oh, yeah. For being the loser among losers... Of the please let us revive this crowd, Mm -hmm. Voltron is currently doing it right. Yeah. It it does. I never got the feeling with Voltron that it expected its nostalgia to keep me there. Yeah. Um. What was nostalgic was there as sort of fun jokes for the uh, the old timers, which is. Kind of what you get in Transformers shows when they make references to old series now. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, this is here for the dads. You know, this is the here for the mm-hmm. moms and the dads who, who had these cartoons growing up. And that's why the space mice show up in an episode. It's just a you kind of nod at that concept. Yeah. And thankfully, Transformers is finally to the point where we don't have to reference the fucking 86 movie every three, those same three lines. Oh, no, they go into much more... Uh, they, they Now they're starting to challenge themselves and get a little bit more obscure. Yeah, they're really going into deep cut territory now, and I appreciate that. Oh, uh, just random aside, did you notice in the one episode of Rid this season, 
that uh, Bumblebee observes that Starscream has gone back to his old look. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he does kind of look a bit like he did in War for Cybertron. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, I figure that was mostly... it's it, Yeah, that was a rare instance of actually calling out body, but I figure that's because they had to have the flashback to his prime look, and yeah. so they kind of had to... Yeah, but no, I... <coughs> I thought that was cute and uh, a fun little nod. Um, but, yeah. And then... But it's not just old series that have the reboot problem. Yeah. Yeah, you wanted to talk about this. I have not seen it. I've only seen, like, little tiny chunks. Okay. I really didn't want to. This is this is your go. Yeah, I really didn't want to. But I hate the new Ben 10. <laughs> Here's the thing. I am usually very capable of seeing, okay, this is clearly not meant for me, but if someone else likes it, okay. But the new Ben 10 reboot has... I don't know what anyone would get out of this. Uh, because, and the easiest way to put this is, there have been a lot of different incarnations of Scooby-Doo. This version of Ben 10 is the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo version <laughs> of Ben 10, in which the, somebody went, okay, well, all right, we're going we're gonna to reboot Ben 10, start it over so that we can get a fresh take and get in new people. It's like, all right, well, that makes sense. So uh, what we had before was a very successful action-adventure cartoon with humor elements uh, that involved a ever-expanding continuity, a large cast of characters, a sense of mythos and importance in the tradition of classic comic books, and a whole bunch of really cool wild aliens. Okay, so what are we going to keep from this for our new thing? Clearly the hijink, the humorous hijinks of eight-year-old Ben. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> The, alien... the aliens are there, but they're not really a feature. The aliens are... They've made every single design that was from the that was previously being used less interesting. Uh, everything has been Imaginextified. Hmm. And I... That's not an insult to Imaginex, because I like that format of figure. But everyone has that kind of build, and every... Like, even... Entirely non-humanoid aliens are now pretty much human. Stinkfly. Stinkfly is a dude with two legs, two arms, and wings, not a horrible mutant fly thing with four eyes. They got a... a freaking wild vine is... Like, they he has two legs and two arms, just like a human in a costume... None of this, like, I'm, I've got long tentacles for arms and four tentacle legs and pods growing out of my back and stuff like that. No, the aliens are all dull. There's no sign. Uh, and admittingly, I just watched episode one and then I skipped straight to episode six just to see hmm. if it was going to pick up anything. They have, they're not doing any continuity near as I can tell. They've, in their press releases, they say it's following Ben on an endless summer. So it's going to be a lengthy kind of process and a Phineas and Ferb mm -hmm. and uh, I don't like the character design the monster designs are all less interesting there's no sign of a uh, bunch well there's no room for a bunch of characters like heaven for Finn you actually liked Kevin Levin or because mm. uh, well I guess this Kevin can still show up in his least interesting form uh, being the eight-year-old sort of jerk version of him uh it's like, hope you didn't like it, like those parts where Gwen was cap capable and able to take care of herself, because that's not happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying for a Teen's Titans Go thing, and it doesn't... But the thing is, is that, like, even with Teen Titans Go, they ramp up and exaggerate the characters. This is just eight-year-old thing. <clears throat> Hmm. Um, without the sense of responsibility and the, you know, the sort of hero, marvelish hero angst that they added to him as a, sub a subset. And I think you'd also mention that they didn't quite um, sparkle motion it, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, they are not committed to sparkle motion. Yeah. Because Teen Titans, whatever you, whatever, whether you think the comedy works, I will say that they don't 
hold back when it goes for going for a joke. For better or worse, and sometimes it's fantastic, and sometimes it's really, really not. <laughs> yeah, they they go full on. They They made all the characters clearly demented, very exaggerated. Um, and, but the thing is... It's one of the problems I always had with, uh, Sonic Boom. I've watched a lot of Sonic Boom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's okay, I... It's, it's a show with promise. It, it, it has that same thing. It could... It's weird that a Sonic... It's weird that something Sonic is afraid to go fast. It, it's... It's not quite willing to pull the trigger and go completely batshit. Right. And and I was just hope I'm really hoping now that Playmates has like a uh, a, a a Ben Ten classic line because I, I have this thing I, I really like relative scale in my action figures and you don't get that from Bandai. If it's a three inch line in Bandai, all the characters will be exactly three inches tall regardless of what their actual sizes are relative. Oh order. God, I remember the first Teen Titans line. Oh, it's even worse when you've got like uh you know. Way big is the same size as Upchuck. Yeah. And way big is the guy that they based on Ultraman. Uh, <laughs> Who's like three stories tall. Yeah, yeah. And of all the figures that they made giant versions of, they didn't. there was never a giant version of, like, say, Humongousaur that wasn't a gimmick figure. That, like, didn't look like Humongousaur. Uh, and that was a form that he took literally, like, every other episode for a season. Uh, but no, I, 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 they don't have to be like one sixty fourth scale or anything. It's just if it's a small character, I just want them smaller than the medium sized characters. And if they're a big Diverging. character, I want them bigger than the medium sized characters. Diverging a bit. I apparently that's what. <clears throat> sorry, Flim. That's what the Pokemon line is doing now. Oh yeah, they've got a collector's line that actually is at scale, I believe. Yeah, or at least close enough. Yeah, but but yeah, it's. I was as a reboot. It seems I, I can appreciate a gag. I can appreciate a continuity less gag thing because something else we want to get into eventually. The trap of continuity, mm-hmm. the potential quicksand of continuity. So I can appreciate a gag filled. Let's just have fun. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> if you do that, you kind of got to get to the core of what. You kind of got to know what the core of what you're doing, of what you're making fun of was, so you can properly make... It's the difference between Airplane or I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, you know, those parodies made with... parody movies made with love, and any of the blank movie bullshit. Right. And the other thing is, is if you're gonna go for a humor series, you have to be funny. Uh, you... <laughs> and the, I just... Not much in episodes one or six tickled me about the new Ben 10 reboot. Um, where I was going with the whole thing about relative scales, I was really excited because Playmates actually does kind of do relative scale, and I was like, at least I'll, no matter how bad the series is, at least I'll get cool a- aliens. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you were gonna talk about the trap of continuity. Yeah, I had seen <clears throat> on Twitter, apparently, um, the new Thor movie is apparently they didn't really bother trying to make it fit into the large Marvel Cinematic Universe. And somebody was commenting about, um, you know, well, that was part of the trap of why Star the Star Wars EU lost a lot of people. It just became this continuity mire. Mm-hmm. So, you know, good good on it. Had, you know, Nash uh, talked about it when we when they announced the... Uh, one of his Here There Be Dragons videos, he talked about how the Star Wars EU had become this big, bulky thing, so you know what? Yeah, maybe it's best if we kind of drop it for the new movies and all that. Yeah, well, I don't see that it's going to be a... From what little I know about Thor Ragnarok, it's the type of movie where you can get away with that, because basically it's just Thor and Hulk uh, having going on a rampage through space. Yeah. You know, they don't have to involve themselves much in anything else. But... Continuity, There's, continuity is the ahead. type of thing that you have to... It's a tool. Mm-hmm. And there are simple ways that you can 
handle it pretty easily, or even just ignore it while keeping it around. Or, you know, you can reboot something and start over from scratch to get new people. It's kind of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, continuity does make things labyrinthine and difficult to keep up with and can make things confusing. On, on the other hand, it can make a universe feel richer and more lived in. And it also makes it so that you only have to see Spider-Man's origin every three movies instead of every, t- <laughs> every one. You know what I really want to see? I want to see another movie where we get a shot of Batman's parents dead in the alley and the pearls. The bouncing yeah. pearls, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, and I totally need people to explain to me where Superman comes from again. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it in the credits, that's fine. Like, uh, one of the Hulk movies basically just had his whole origin in the credits. Hmm. <laughs> You get the opening credits, you see the experiment, you see the first transformation. I think it was the second one with Ed, uh, that was uh, with Edward Norton. I think that's the one they did that. No idea. Never saw it. The Hulk movies all kind of blur together in my head. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you can tell if, if you really <coughs> feel that you need to catch up Grandma, you can put that stuff in the, in the opening credits because... Most superhero origins aren't that involved. They were told in a 22 issue comic, 22 page comic book. Most of us know this stuff by now. If only through sheer cultural osmosis. Batman, he's rich. His parents got killed. His butler never took him to a therapist, and now he dresses up as a bat and beats up people to avenge injustice. It's not that hard. Yeah. And a lot of and a lot of people, it, their origin kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how the Flash became the Flash. Right. We don't need to know Aquaman's origin, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, you know, Aquaman has the advantage that his origin is just, hey, I'm from, I, hey, my mom was from I'm Atlantis. From the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the fucking sea. I'm part fish on my mom's side. No, sorry, Aquaman, get out of the fucking sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, Aquaman can just go. Yeah, I'm part fish on my mom's side. You know, that's kind of his, his <laughs> that's whole... That's all you need. Yeah. Uh, well, Hasbro always had a very interesting way of <clears throat> uh, approaching continuity with Transformers. I base, it basically boiled down to the squint test. If you can kind of side-eye it and squint and it kind of fits, you know what, that's for good enough. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, the... Uh, something I've really noticed lately is that and, um, you know, he goes by RAC on Twitter, and he follows a lot of my stuff, and I can't uh, mention that it seems like the really heavy continuity stuff tends to come from second-generation um, creators. Or from novelists. The Ascended Fan. There's a bit of that, the, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, not not specifically Ascended Fan, but, well, a novelist who saw Star Wars mm-hmm. and loved Star Wars. They were already science fiction writers, but they loved Star Wars, so let's... Right. I think part of it is that, in some cases, that that's, again, it's one of, sort of a double-edged in, impulse. Mm-hmm. Because on the one hand, they a lot of them are doing what the original creators might have done had they been able to get away with it in their time and place. Um, maybe because you know it, especially for like early stuff like you know your your star Tre- your like star trek the old series and your first star wars movies there were studio concerns to be addressed and things like hmm. that and so a tighter more highbrow science fiction take is valid you know yeah um but in some cases people just let it strangle them and it's it's worst in comics because comics are a soap opera format. Yeah. And this is uh, this is something I was discussing uh, with a friend of mine that the that soap operas, comics, and wrestling are all the same thing. They just use different means of problem resolution. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> but. They, well, wrestling and comics aren't that far apart. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, but like, 
in wrestling, it's all under the sanction of, like, an organized sporting event, even though there's rampant cheating from the bad guys, because they're bad guys. Yeah. And, uh, superheroes... And everything all everything has to happen on Monday or Thursday nights. Yeah. Monday or the pay-per-view. Right. Nothing else happens in those other days. Yeah. The, no one ever settles a beef if the cameras aren't around. Uh, whereas comic books, they live in a universe where uh, all of your natural, your real-world authorities are toothless and corrupt. And so they settle their problems in the streets with superpowers. And in in uh, and in soap operas, it's all secret murders and affairs and, you know, uh, oil baron trickstery and whatever. Hmm. Or occasionally an animated talking marionette. <laughs> or the various actions of the devil, depending on who's writing the, the, uh, the soap opera at the time. But, uh, but yeah, but it's all the same thing. It's this, it, the story never ends. Uh, characters come in and out. People switch sides. It's all about who is in love with who and who's a rival of who and which hero has fallen to become a villain and which villain has seen the light to become a hero only later to flip back. And it's... Uh, I, I have always enjoyed, in a meta sense, time to sound snobby, in wrestling, just watching the way the stories adapt mm -hmm. to how the audience is going. When you know, watching a particular character really get heat, I guess. Yeah. Get really popular, so they push him, and then they do some other direction, and then it doesn't quite work. But some element of it, uh, Santino Morella, who I don't think is around yeah. anymore. Started out as kind of a nobody. They pushed him. He got really popular. They kind of turned him into a heel. And nobody really quite liked him as a heel, but they liked him as a comedic figure. So he became, you know, the the popular schmuck mm -hmm. character. And it was just kind of fascinating watching that, th that evolve. Yeah, well, it, it's one of those things that you kind of see, like, if you know what the behind-the-scenes politics are. Uh, you can kind of, like, Marvel's, like, major event stuff is a lot of cases a, a complicated dance of maneuvering around who's selling action figures and which studio, which movie studio is pissed off Marvel at the moment. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're not going to focus on the X-Men books so much because Fox won't give us back those rights! Is it, wasn't there some inhuman stuff now that that movie's not happening, or...? Uh, I've heard it go back and forth on that. Apparently the Inhumans storyline in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. didn't blow up anybody's skirt that much, and they're reconsidering it. Mm. But, um... I, I'm, I'm going to elicit some jeers in that I'm glad that Fox has X-Men. Um, the X-Men don't make sense in the Marvel Universe. The X-Men should have their own separate tangential Marvel Universe. Yeah. Their conflict doesn't work in a universe with other superheroes, and it's better that a different movie studio has them because now shit can get done in the Marvel Cinematic Universe without Wolverine popping up every movie. Yeah. Um, you know, get some attention on some people that aren't Wolverine. Yeah. Um, it, but continuity. Yeah, continuity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it can become a tra it, well. It becomes a trap if you let it. It's like the yeah. swamp of sadness from the never-ending so story. You know, and it, it seems to be a very like I said, it seems to be a very popular thing with people new to writing this thing they like. That they that they gotta go back and fill in. Yeah, they gotta play in that kind of new, and it's kind of like you don't really need to. Yeah, and there is That's a difference cool. between a callback and a continuity connection. Um, if you have a, you know, if you're watching something Batman related and you go to the, the Joker's lair and he has a tank of Joker fish, that's a cute call out and a reference, not necessarily a, a continuity thing that will tie you down in future things. Yeah. Whereas... Um, in a lot of cases, when you've got the same story that's been going on for years and years and years, you have the problem that either you have to readdress all the times you've hit a certain topic over the years, or at a certain point, you just have to pretend that you haven't done it, so, you're, so your audience, which is not all going to have the omnibus, understand what's going on. Um, 
Sometimes you just straight up don't really need to have a continuity or a backstory or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just not necessary at all. What the character is now is all you need. Right. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my little favorite things about the current uh, Robots in Disguise series. Mm -hmm. There's no backstory for most of its cast. Yeah, there's Bumblebee and Prime. They've got a whole goddamn history. Blah, 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 blah. But Strongarm, she's just a cadet who really wants to be a good police officer. That's it. There's yeah. no dramatic... There's no dramatic, I lost my teacher. There's no big burning... Th she's just... I want to do it. Sideswipe's just some punk kid with an authority figure problem. Right. That's all you need. Grimlock, who a lot of people are complaining about how we don't know if he's supposed to be the Grimlock... It doesn't friggin' matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wouldn't. It it wouldn't affect the show. Grimlock is what he needs to be here. Right. That's all you need. And they handle the continuity to the same level on Rescue Bots, where yeah. clearly, like the stuff from Rid and Prime is going on, or in some form, but they don't really talk about it much. It's just. It's just you get the feeling that there's a bigger world out there, but they're not going to bog down in the details of it. And not just because this is a show for five-year-olds. No, it's because it's cleaner storytelling. Um, like, your uh, your continuity stuff... Um, you know who handles continuity really well is Doctor Who. And... Th they throw it out as they need to. Right. They, they use exactly <clears throat> as much as they need to. And because in any situation where the Doctor runs into a monster, there's a good 50-50 chance he knows what it is even if he's never seen it in an episode before anyway, because that's who he is. The Doctor knows a lot of things. So he can say that those are, uh, you know, quadrones from the, the Seventh Nebula, and it doesn't matter if that's because they were in a 1960s episode, or if because they just got made up this week. He knows as much as he needs to know for the show. That, and they have said that it's a time travel show, and as such, continuity can be rewritten at a moment's notice, without you knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> without you being let in on it. So it's a brilliant cop out. Yeah. <laughs> really they they pretty much have the mystery science theater mantra. If, if there's yeah. think of yourself it's just a show I should really just relax. Um but on the other hand, I mean there are things where some things are clearly more important to continuity than other things. Like you can't just have a so, without it being a reboot, you can't just have a story where Peter Parker goes and sees his Uncle Ben. And it's not yeah. at the cemetery. Or... The, uh, Unless you're going to kill him pretty quickly. <laughs> right. Unless it's going to be... Pr turn out it's a clone created by Jackal to screw with par pri Parker's head again. You know, or whatever you're going to do. Um, you can't... Uh, you know, sir, sir, like when an important character... When a, a character is dead, you can't just bring them back. Unless it's a new continuity. Uh, or it's Transformers. Or it's Transformers. But it, <laughs> or unless there's a resurrection done. You can't just bring them back without explanation. Um, you know, there, there are... I think the word we're looking for is restraint. Restraint, yeah. You... you um, Priorities. Uh, I'm kind of... You know what? It's kind of like Slimer. Uh, Straczynski was fond of saying in regards to real Ghostbusters that a little Slimer goes a long way mm -hmm. uh, but when he's effectively used he's very good but when overused he's detrimental and that's yeah. kind of how it is with continuity um, good continuity is when in season 3 of something you bring back the, se the villain from season 1 to cause trouble again um uh, Bad continuity is when you let the fact that there was a that the comic book that you're writing on has been going on uninterrupted since 1942, and you use that as an as a reason to turn half your issue into exposition about stuff that none of the currently living audience has read. Mm -hmm. Priorities. That said. Easter eggs, usually okay. <clears throat> you can overdo them. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, like, can't, 
Easter eggs or candy. Might as well be. Mm-hmm. You can overdo it on the candy. Well, like uh, this season of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the director, his human identity is the third Captain America from the comics. Yeah. No. It's a fun shout-out. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, this dude who's running S.H.I.E.L.D. and has superpowers is one of the Cold at War era Captain America replacements that got hauled out by Marvel during that time. It's a cute it's a cute nod. You know, here his origin is different, his background is different, but it's a cute nod. That I'm okay with. Yeah. Now if they That's attempted fine. to explain that he was in fact in the nineteen sixties running around in a Captain America costume and no one had ever explained or seen this before, that would have been a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you put the brakes on, you take the writer aside, and you bap him on the nose with a rolled up newspaper and go, no. Uh, but yeah. So I, I think the sum up is, for today, is um, I hate Ben 10, the new <laughs> one. I love the old one. Love all the old ones. Even Alien Force. Screw you guys. And, um... But uh, I like Ben 10. Nostalgia is not a surefire. Yeah, nostalgia nostalgia is one of your tools. It is not your entire workshop. And um, Voltron was way better than either of us expected. <laughs> yeah, it's better than it deserved to be. Yeah, and um, ultimately the story and the needs of the audience overrule a pedantic clinging to past events. Pretty much. Well, I think we've covered all of our major topics, and I now really need to pee. So, okay. everybody, uh, good evening. Thank and we'll close with the strains of the Get Along Gang. Oh, because I'm a bastard. It's true. He is. Yeah. No, my parents were married. <laughs> oh. One month into the pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> That was a fun day when I made did that little mental math. <laughs> I was born a year and a day after my parents got married. <laughs> uh, anyway, have fun, and uh, we'll see you sometime in an indeterminate period in the future. We'll try and get more stuff out as soon as I get my computer shit taken care of. Indeed. Soon. Night. Hey, Pipples, if you liked our nonsense, why don't you give us a like, or a subscribe, or leave a comment down there somewhere? You can also do us a big solid by joining our Patreon, where you'll get to join us for live streams, get early access to the newest videos, and other such things. Geek Vision.